Hello, everybody. Happy Monday, and welcome to our third episode of TPAC TV. I'm Alex Zach. I'm Mariah Southers. And Mariah is our incredible intern this fall, <laughs> and she is going to tell us a little bit about herself. Yeah, so I am a senior at Western Kentucky University. I'm a broadcasting major there, mm -hmm. and I'm interning here at TPAC. Um, with Alex, yeah. <laughs> and also before I came to TPAC, I interned at the Kennedy Center in DC and did some video production stuff with them. So I love the theater, I love the performing arts, it's a great <laughs> place to be. It is a great place to be. So I have to ask, was traffic worse coming into the Kennedy Center every day or is traffic Ooh. worse driving from Bowling Green to TPAC every day? That's a really hard question. Um, the metro is a whole other thing. That's so <laughs> That's I, true. I rode in on the metro and DC, but I really like being in my car and jamming out. I, I'm a big uh, time in the car girl, so. Well, what did you jam out that. to this morning? Oh gosh, I'm not even, I don't even know. Celine. Celine Dion, Celine excellent, Dion. excellent mm -hmm. choice. <laughs> We love some Celine Dion here <laughs> yes. at TPAC. <laughs> so we have a bunch of great segments heading your way on today's episode, and we're going to kick it off with Mariah. Let us know. Yeah. So first off, we got visiting the Tennessee State Museum, the new and improved at its yes. new location. Yes. It's beautiful there. And then we're going to speak with Around the Americas with Uno Dos Tres Andres and see what he's doing with the new program he's bringing here to Definitely. TPAC. And then we're going to discuss Giving Tuesday with Susan Luna. It's crazy to think that it is already November and oh gosh, yeah. Thanksgiving is right around the corner, which means Black Friday is right around mm -hmm. the corner, which means Cyber Monday is right around the corner, <laughs> which means Giving Tuesday is right around the corner. It, crazy. Biggest day of the year. Biggest day of the year, for <laughs> sure. So first, we want to kick things off with the shows coming this November. Yes, we do. So the first thing we got going this weekend is Game Show Weekend here at TPAC. Yes. We got a little double dare and Price is Right. And then, to start off the holiday season, we got White Christmas coming up um, next week, and we have a promo code, Jolly, and with that, you can get a four-pack with $40 tickets each, so each ticket's 40 bucks. It's a great deal. We're really excited about that one. Um, Jeremy Benton also went to Western Kentucky, and yeah, he's in the show. Yeah, go Tops. <laughs> <laughs> so, also with Winter Holiday Fest, the Nashville Repertory Theater is doing a Christmas story for the last time here mm -hmm. at TPAC. And Hip Hop Nutcracker has two performances on November 24th. We hope you'll join us. Yes. So with the Tennessee State Museum, we're gonna jump right into that segment. Yeah. Tony Marks from here at TPAC went over to check it out. Let's see what he's doing. Hey everybody, this is Tony at TPAC. For almost 40 years, TPAC and the Tennessee State Museum have actually shared the same building, the James K. Polk Cultural Center. But now, our former neighbors and friends have a brand new facility. We wanted to check it out and take you with us. Come on. So I'm here with Ashley Howell, Executive Director of the Tennessee State Museum. We're in the Grand Hall. Ashley, how's everything going? It's great. It's great. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I, this is a beautiful space. Are you feeling like you're settled in yet, or is we're, it still We're new? settling in. We, okay. We've been open a couple of weeks, and we're still tweaking a couple things, but it's been so great to be open for the public. Well, it's absolutely gorgeous in here, and I understand some of the architectural elements are specifically tied to Tennessee. Can you highlight a couple of them here in this room? Absolutely, absolutely. So here in the Grand Hall, we have 95 lights okay. that represent 95 counties of Tennessee. Cool, and I see the three stars over here yes. on the floor, so yes. I think I know what those represent. Uh, so much that you were talking about earlier with me about the, the permanent exhibit has moved over. But there are a lot of new things here in this space. Yes. You mentioned the children's exhibit. Are there yes. a couple other things like that that are just brand new that yes. you need to know about? So we have a digital learning center. We'll be able to have programs and be able to record those. Children's gallery for families to come and explore. This is very different for us. This is very different for, from our former space. Um, but also exhibitions that are presented in a new way. So there's artifacts that our visitors are going to remember. But we also add interpretation of the last 100 years. 
at our former space. It ended in about 1920. Mm -hmm. So we present the last 100 years in Tennessee's history. That's great. So what do you have, if I were, if anyone's coming here tomorrow, for example, what might they see, anything special in the permanent exhibit or the temporary exhibit? What do you have currently in the building? So we have six permanent exhibits and we also have six temporary exhibits. Uh, our permanent exhibits will continue to tweak and change and add artifacts, but it's just a great place to come and explore. Should we go take a look yeah, at a couple let's things? Yeah, take a look. Great. So Ashley, where are we now? We are in the Tennessee Time Tunnel. So this is the timeline of Tennessee history. So visitors can learn about Tennessee history, national events, um, but it's also a place that you can enter into our six permanent collection galleries. And it looks like you can kind of, you can go around the sort of inside track, but if you jump into a gallery, you can keep going in that, in the, between the galleries as well, right? Yes, so in a lot it. of ways, it's choose your own adventure. So we want the visitor to experience the museum and, and how they want to do it. They may want to start at the beginning. They may want to go to a specific gallery. Um, behind you is Forging a Nation, time period 1760 to 1860, and it's just a place to come explore. So we encourage our visitors to come do that. Let's do that. Let's go okay. see where it leads, okay? Okay. Okay, so we're a little deeper into the time tunnel right now. Yes, yes. So music is very much a part of Tennessee history and culture. So we have the original Ernest Hub record shop sign from 1947. So this was on the this was on the building. This was outside the record shop until 1960. And then we also have a Rockola jukebox here um, because again, music is a part of Tennessee history. And so we've got a gallery dedicated to music history, but also artifacts in relation to that history. Now, coming from a performing arts center, I've heard that there's a an Elvis jacket. There's Tina Turner stuff in here. There's Dolly Parton here. Dolly Parton stuff here. I think we need to go check that out. Real Let's quick, go check so. it out. Okay, cool. So we're out of the time tunnel. Let's talk about the temporary exhibits. In the old space, you just had one. Now you have six. What can people expect when they come to visit the same museum? Well, for the, the six temporary exhibition spaces, it's a way for us to show more of our collection over time. We have a vast collection. Those six spaces will be constantly changing. So there's always something new to see. So right now we're in the Red Grooms exhibition. This will be up through mid-January. But this is also a highlight of a local Tennessee artist uh, who spends his time here in Tennessee and also in New York. And it's a retrospective of his work. It's amazing. And then there's a Civil War exhibit up now as well, right? Yes, so we've got an exhibition that is off of the Civil War Gallery. Uh, we've got a highlight, um, too, of art in our collection. And we also have a survey of Tennessee music history. You can take a deep dive in the content, and we're free. So we, we want people to come back. We want people to come back over time and see what's new at the Tennessee State Museum. That's great. Thank you so much for the time. Ashley, this is amazing. Speaking of deep dive, I'm going to go get lost in the time tunnel again. And I don't know when I'm going to come out, but I'm going to go check it out right now. Thank you again okay. so much. Thank Appreciate you it. so much. Yeah. So that's just a small sneak peek of the new Tennessee State Museum. Remember, they're closed on Mondays. They close at 8 on Thursdays. It's big and beautiful and interactive. But when you come, make sure you take a moment to enjoy one of its best assets, a beautiful view of the city of Nashville. Tony, that looked awesome. I'm so glad you got a chance to go to the new Tennessee State Museum and everybody should go check it out. I mean, it's free. Whenever you have a few minutes or a few hours, really, <laughs> go check it out and you can learn more at tnmuseum.org. Yeah, so now we're here with Susan Luna. Hello. Hello. <laughs> she is the Senior Director of Individual Giving. So how are you today? I'm doing well. How are you all? I'm good. Great. Good. I'm so you're... excited to be here on TPAC TV. Yes. yes. So glad to have you. <laughs> we are in your lair right now here yes. in the Donor Lounge. We appreciate you letting us use it to film. <laughs> yes, definitely. This is a great space. I'm here a lot, but I'm glad to be here with you all this morning. <laughs> we're glad to have you. Yeah, so we want to just kind of Talk about um, the fact that TPAC is a nonprofit. A lot of people don't really realize that aspect um, of the Tennessee Performing Arts Center. And when people donate, what does that money do? Where does the money go? And kind of, can you talk about that a little? Sure. So, yes, TPAC is a nonprofit organization. So, we rely on donations to fund our programs. 
Uh, a lot of people don't realize that we have an entire season of theater programs just for school groups to experience as field trips. All year long, we have students and teachers visiting TPAC to see professional music, dance, and theater productions through our HOT season for young people. Mm. Thanks to donations, tickets to these shows are only $8 per student for schools. Uh -huh. And that is only possible because donors are generous and help us support these programs. Right. Yeah, and so we also um, bring arts to public school classrooms, mm -hmm. um, build theater programs in schools. We have opportunities for adults to learn about theater and the arts. And if you'd like to learn more about our education programs, all the details, there, we have six education programs and they're all so wonderful. And you can learn more about them at tpac.org slash education. So yeah, definitely going off of that, now that it is November, we have Giving Tuesday coming up right after Cyber Monday, the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Do you wanna to talk to us a little bit about what exactly Giving Tuesday is? Sure, so Giving Tuesday is a global initiative to celebrate philanthropy and help encourage communities support the nonprofits in their local area. And so this year it is on November 27th. It is every year on the Tuesday after uh, Thanksgiving, then Black Friday, then Cyber Monday, and then Giving Tuesday, as you mentioned earlier. And so it's kind of the unofficial kickoff to the holiday and end of year giving season. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. So yeah, we are definitely participating here at TPAC and you can find out more information on our social media um, as well as givingtuesday.org, is that yes, correct? Yes, yes. If you'd like to participate in Giving Tuesday and help support TPAC, you can donate online at tpac.org slash donate. Mm -hmm. And to learn more about the initiative as a whole, you can go to givingtuesday.org. We also encourage you to share Giving Tuesday messages because this is a social media fueled initiative. Mm -hmm. So if you share, even if you donate or do not donate, share the importance of giving back to the community and philanthropy and help encourage others to do the same. Mm -hmm. You kind of touched on this earlier, just how important um, donations are to these programs. Can you talk about just how, what exactly it would look like if, you know, those programs weren't funded? Sure, we, we do rely fully on donations to support these programs. So without them, not only would the actual programs not exist, but many students would never have the opportunity to come to theater. We, we give students the opportunity to visit theater for the first time and to experience the arts. And mm -hmm. this is only possible with the support from donors. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think a lot of people may not realize that, you know, when they purchase a ticket to a show here at TPAC, that money is not being put into our education programs in any way. The money right. that goes to these children and to all these different programs are from strictly donations that, you know, are coming from other places. So definitely check out um, Giving Tuesday coming up uh, November 27th. And also just to learn more, you can go to tpac.org slash donate. Yes, thank you so much. Thanks, yeah, Susan, thank for you. joining us yeah, today. This is great. And speaking of the different programs that we have and bringing students here to TPAC to see a show, we sat down with Across the Americas with Uno Dos Trace Andres, and he's actually coming here November 26th through the 28th. Hey everybody, it's Alex Zach here with TPAC TV and I am with Andres and Christina from Around the Americas with Uno Dos Trace Andres. How are you guys doing today? We are great. We're so excited to be here at TPAC. Very happy to be in Nashville and happy to be coming back later in November. Yes, so they are actually here. They were just in Polk Theater working with a group of teaching artists for professional development. Can you tell us a little bit what this was all about? Yeah, um, we were doing a workshop on how we have um, crafted some of the stories we perform using songs um, and, and encouraging them to use some of those strategies with their students so their students also come up with new stories and, um, and do performances um, at both small and large scale. It was a lot of fun. We got a lot of feedback also from, from the teachers and they were excited. And the most the, the better the best part, we got the teachers and the and the teaching artists up from performing, being silly, creating on the spot. We we laughed a lot. That's awesome. Yeah. So you guys are very multi-talented. There you bring a lot of different things to these shows that you perform for children. If a teacher is bringing their students to see a show, what can they expect? 
Well, definitely they're go their students are going to be interacting. It's not the type of show that they sit for for 45 minutes and just, you know, just uh, cross their arms. Mm -hmm. No, they're going to be singing, moving, and helping us solve this mystery because, you know, in the show, I'm very sad because I miss my friend, but... Yeah, well, we're going to try a couple different ideas and we're looking for Andres' friend, Juana. So if you've seen her, then come over to the show. We're all going to work together to find her. We need to find my friend. <laughs> So you guys will be back in November, November 26th to the 28th, right in Pulp Theater, where we just were performing. And tell us, why did you want to bring this show across the U.S.? What is it about, you know, you speak multiple languages in the show, you play multiple instruments, there's a lot of problem solving. What is it about all of these things that you wanted to bring together? Well, um, we uh, the show is an opportunity for us to learn a little bit about the Americas and the geography, the countries in North, South, Central America and the Caribbean, and um, also to learn a little bit about culture and learn a little bit about language. And one thing also, when we meet our friend Juana, it's a great opportunity and, and, and the kids feel a lot of empathy when they meet Juana. And I cannot tell you a lot about her. We don't want to spoil it, but uh, she's very special. Uh, but she's a little bit nervous, so it's 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 nice for the kids to to try to help. Yeah. So why do you think it's important for kids to be exposed to multiple languages in the arts at an early age? Well, I was uh, grew up here in the U.S. Um, I grew up speaking Spanish at home and English at school. And whether children are have a similar. Um, home life as, as what I did growing up bilingual or whether they're learning Spanish at school or whether they speak no Spanish at all. Um, you know, learning another language, learning about people who are similar to you but also different from you, um, we think is a really powerful and so we wanted to offer this as an opportunity for kids to, um, to come in contact with that. Yeah, we're in a multicultural society mm -hmm. where, you know, so many People come from so many places, and we've come from 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 different places. So we just we just want students to learn a little bit about their own heritage if they come from one of these places, or learn about their friends that are around them. Awesome. Well, thank you both for spending some time with us. And around the Americas with Uno Dos Tres Andres, we'll be coming right back here to Polk Theater, November 26th to the 28th. See you here. It was such a pleasure speaking with Christina and Andres, and I'm so excited for them to come back November 26th through the 28th. If you are a teacher and interested in bringing your kids to see a production here, or if you're a parent and are wondering how your school can get involved, you can check it out at tpac.org. Yeah. So we have awesome. made it, yeah, we've made it to the end Woo. of our episode. And if you've watched some previous ones, you know that we like to end every episode with something that we're excited about happening this month. And we could not do this episode without mentioning that tomorrow is election day. Is election day. If you have not <laughs> voted yet, you can still, you know, get out there tomorrow. Yes. And uh, we will see you at the polls. Yeah, make your voice heard. Educate Woo. yourself on the issues and go out and vote. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. I'm Alex. I'm Raya. And we'll see you later.